guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Steph. And today I am going to be talking about how I packed for about two weeks in Europe in a carry-on. And this kind of can go for any sort of carry-on only trip. I'm going to be talking specific details about my trip to Italy, but the overarching kind of ideology definitely stays the same. So if you want to see how I packed for two weeks in Europe with only a carry-on, keep on watching. Now, obviously there are so many places to travel in the summer, but today we are going to be specifically focusing on Italy and the Amalfi Coast because I'm going to be talking about my experiences with a carry-on there. But a lot of the themes and a lot of the ideology is definitely applicable across multiple locations and kind of any trip you want to do with carry-on, the kind of basics are going to stay the same. But in the back half of this video, I'm going to be going place by place and breaking down my outfits and kind of what I liked, what I didn't like, the pieces and like my thoughts on the pieces to give you guys a better understanding of how I put together the outfits and how I kind of structure the wardrobe for the trip, if that makes sense. So anyways, okay. So last summer I went to Italy, if you guys aren't aware, um, and I went for just under two weeks and took only carry-on luggage because I was traveling during the time that both Toronto Pearson and London Heathrow had the worst baggage claims experiences ever. It was a mess. This was the time where there were like floors full to the brim of just people's checked baggage. So my friends and I were like, we're not gonna deal with that. We're not gonna get our bags. We're not gonna deal with that hassle. We're just gonna do carry on only in, out, bing, bang, boom. But it's actually a very stressful experience and I'm not gonna be repeating it anytime soon because it was specifically the liquids and like I wear contacts. So I needed to bring my contacts, my contact solution, all of that stuff. And so that added in addition to all of the other stuff I was trying to bring, it was just, was not for me. Um, but it did give me some insights and ideas on if I were to do it again, what I would do and wouldn't do moving forward. So kind of the first thing I wanted to get out of the way is I think if I didn't have color treated hair, I would definitely not have packed shampoo and conditioner, but I didn't want to run the risk of inadvertently stripping the color out of my hair or having it turn super brassy. Now I do have really dark hair, but if you have color treated dark hair, it can pull really, really red and really, really auburn. And that can be exacerbated by the same things that like the going green, going orange um, issues that blondes can have as well. So I just didn't wanna run the risk and I wanted to stay with my tried and true shampoo and conditioner because the other thing, in addition to being color treated, I actually, I just have a lot of hair. It's thick, it's long, and it is fairly low maintenance, but I find that without the right shampoo conditioner combination, it's not. It can get very dry, very tangly, and going for two weeks I with a lot of in and out of the sea, that sort of stuff, I did not want to risk my hair, okay? I just didn't want to risk it. So that's kind of something else that I would have left behind, but yeah, that was my situation. I think other people wouldn't be in a situation, but if you are dyed blonde, uh, you will understand, like if you have color treated hair at all, you will understand that inadvertently stripping your hair or inadvertently like having it discolor is a big concern when you're traveling and you can't go to your salon immediately and be like, hi, you know? Um, honestly, it wouldn't have been super noticeable on my hair, but in the sun and stuff, you could really see, you could really see the red in it. Um, if I did inadvertently like have it go like super, like, you know, go like brassy, you know? It would be really obvious. My hair would honestly look red under lighting and in photos. So I was like, mm. okay, anyways. Let's go high, high level first. In terms of aesthetics, I always stick to a base wardrobe of neutral colors, lots of white, lots of beige, camel, etc. Because I prefer to keep things really simple, easy to mix and match and understated. I am not like looking to be a pop of color in the, in the sea. I like my neutrals. I like how everything looks cohesive. I like how everything can just be thrown together. And when traveling, I honestly want the background to kind of be 
the focus. I mean, I want to be in the photo, but I don't want to be the center of attention necessarily. If I'm taking a photo of a beautiful vista and I just happen to be in it, I, I, I kind of want to just be like happening to be in the photos kind of vibe. But I still wanted my outfits to be cute, but I wanted I wanted to blend and I also wanted to be a little bit timeless. I didn't want to wear a trendy color that was trendy for that year. And then when I looked back at the photos, I was like, oh my God, I hate that color now. So I kind of stuck with it just neutrals and this doesn't mean that you have to stick to neutrals it just means that neutrals are my personal preference and that's what i did but if you want color and want to go full out like absolutely but just think about the colors and their color matching and how you pair that together i think that's like the most important thing like with neutrals you always can match everything kind of across the board whereas colors sometimes depending on the shade the tone the shade and the undertone it doesn't always cohesively go together you have to be more concerned with more concerned with warm tone cool tone etc 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 anyways okay i also kept my accessories super simple i didn't pack any of like my higher end rings or bracelets and i kept it really simple with just the pieces that i wear every single day and never take off so i packed this necklace and then i left all of my earrings and that was it um i also have a bracelet that i need to get repaired that i don't take off so if that had been fixed i would have brought that too but in general i do just only wear the jewelry plus i now have a welded bracelet which i wouldn't take i'm not a big accessories person as you guys can tell i just kind of put things on and leave them but so even if i had brought stuff i wouldn't necessarily have worn it because i am just not the type of person to switch my jewelry out every single day so left that at home i don't really care then the next thing with each item the goal had to be that the items had to be lightweight multi-day meaning obviously that i would wear it at least two times for the majority of the pieces there are definitely exceptions to this and then yeah like you know easy to pack compressible kind of layer on layer off sort of things for shoes i definitely overpacked i want to like put this right out there in my defense it was kind of unnecessary for me to bring heels and an extra pair of rubber flip-flops because i did have a pair of like leather flip-flops um but i just kind of didn't know how those leather flip-flops were going to hold up so i was like i'll just bring rubber they're easy they're small whatever and the heels yeah i didn't really need to bring them but they were cute and they did make looks and i did wear them twice should i have worn them more probably but honestly it was just hard to pack so for shoes overall i packed a pair of white sneakers i packed my axel arigato vegan white sneakers that i brought that i bought for new york then i packed a pair of white midform tevas then i packed a pair of rubber havianas then i packed a pair of uh like leather teaks and then i packed a pair of white strappy sandal low heels which were unnecessary but they were cute this year if we do end up going to greece i probably won't pack any heels at all and i'll just opt for a pair of nice dressy kind of sandaly situation so then for makeup i am a big makeup gal but i went as lean as possible and picked up as many minis where I could and cut out as many liquid products as I possibly could in favor of cream or powder. Now, things that I did prior leaving, which helped me on this run, I got a lash lift and tint for two reasons. One was to leave the lash curler behind and two, my lashes are really straight. So at the beach with the curled lashes, it kind of helped me give the illusion that I had a little bit of makeup on. And I definitely was worried that I was gonna give Egghead with no lashes. And you know what, I just gave Egghead with some lashes. So it is what it is on that. Then of course, waxing. I just didn't wanna carry a razor and I didn't wanna have to deal with buying one, especially because our first stop wasn't Rome. Our first stop was Positano, which there, there are pharmacies, but knowing that we were gonna go into like a tourist trap sort of town immediately, I knew that things were going to be really expensive and honestly Positano just does not have a crazy amount of variety. Their like pharmacies are very small, they're very small towns and it was just like it was a gamble to kind of rely on needing a razor and so I was like whatever. 
they're very small things but if you do think about the fact that like a lash curler takes up like kind of quite a bit of room in your makeup bag and also then i also had the ability to not wear mascara on certain days if i wanted to and then waxing like just like not having a razor dealing with that taking the time spending the money there that kind of was worth it for me so here's kind of like the difficulty with a carry-on is obviously you have limited space and you always have limited space while traveling, but you don't realize how small carry-ons are until you try and fit two weeks worth of outfits, makeup, clothes, shoes, and everything kind of in there. So the way I really dealt with this was an aggressive amount of pre-planning and deciding when I would wear what look. And I made kind of like a PowerPoint presentation, but on Canva, like just their presentation with all of the locations and then what I wanted to wear at each location. And to kind of go through this, you'll see it on the screen, but here's a quick breakdown of how I put this together. So the first thing I did was pulled inspo pics from Pinterest, from our various locations or from outfits that I wanted to recreate. And then I arranged these photos into our itinerary effectively. So each slide was like a location plus like the day and whatever. I had such a clear vision of what I wanted to wear because I had spent quite a few weeks beforehand in the planning process, researching and planning each location. And so in my mind, I started to get an idea of what I wanted to look like. Now that's just how my brain kind of works through these things. But even if you're kind of not like that, I would really recommend kind of planning like this is your day one outfit, this is your day two outfit, this is your day three, just so that you know like in your suitcase, like where to put things and it makes it a lot easier kind of down the road. So getting it all together was kind of the easy part, getting it all to fit in the suitcase, a different story. Once I got everything inputted into the presentation, I then made a packing list of everything I needed to pack and also having all of the looks put together in that form allowed me to see what pieces I could actually like reuse, rewear, double up, whatever. And we did pack laundry detergent. Um, we packed like laundry sheets as well as like little packets of laundry. So we did do laundry kind of every few days um, for things like socks, the linen shirts, all that, you know, basic things. So I had a packing list and then I went through and took out the things that were unnecessary in my opinion. And then I was just left with what I thought was like, I must bring everything. And then of course, at the end of the trip, hindsight being 2020, you realize you didn't need all of that stuff anyways. So first biggest tip is you probably don't need as much as you're thinking of packing in regards of like, if you have a pair of shorts, like, like you just like, you really need like one pair of shorts and you need like one pair of linen pants and one shirt. like. I had two different pairs of linen shorts and yes, they were different or two pairs of like shorts that could have doubled. They had different styles for sure. And they had different looks, but I could have switched the linen shorts that were more formal with a skirt or something, you know, that I had already worn, just stuff like that. So keep that in mind that like, ultimately you probably don't need as much as you think you do. Um, and it's not like you're going on a, if you are going on a cruise or like to an all-inclusive where you're seeing the same people, you might feel like you need more. But with this, where you're like, you're constantly traveling around, you're constantly going to different cities and all that. Like, trust me, nobody on Instagram or on TikTok cares that you re-wore the skirt multiple times. I mean, maybe they do, but like, that's a them problem. Like, trust me, it's not, it's not that deep. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, also given the fact that I had limited space, I also, and I needed to lift the roller carry-on over my head, I decided to avoid any pieces that were embellished or heavy or like embroidered. So no denim was packed, nothing sequined, nothing embroidered, whatever. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna cover my basis on that because one thing is you might not have a weight restriction for uh, carry-on luggage necessarily, but the weight restriction is obviously your ability to lift something up above your head or drag it along with you in like those cities. So if you think about like the Amalfi Coast, it's all like uphills, downhills, whatever. If you're going to Portugal, like Lisbon is all uphill. And if you are gonna be having to drag your suitcase around with you at all, 
Uh, keep that in mind that the weight is something to think about. And even like on and off ferries, like that sort of stuff. Like if you're like us, like we were going with three of us, like we like there was nobody to help us. We did it ourselves. So keep in mind, and I always think that no matter what, when you're traveling, you should always be able to carry your own luggage. But that is further exacerbated when you consider that there's not a boyfriend or a husband or a dad or an older brother or, or somebody to kind of do that for you. Like keep that in mind that like, if you are gonna travel the way we are, self-sufficiency is really important. So being able to lift your own luggage is a huge factor in being self-sufficient in those situations. And I also, so I brought two bags, um, like actual bags for the trip. I brought an everywhere belt bag, which I also wore on the plane. It was like my second personal item. It was really small and I could have shoved it into my like long chomp if I needed to. And then I packed my little Sunday best and nylon like shoulder bag. And I was super happy with both of these choices. And honestly, with any trip moving forward, I might just bring this combination again. They were really easy. The everywhere belt bag was perfect for walking around every day in cities and all that sort of stuff. And then the shoulder bag was a cute little like dress up moment. It was for dinners. It was for like when we were in Capri, stuff like that. Like super easy and I would 10 out of 10 recommend. Then I also want to mention that I had, so I had a long chomp in a long chomp um, for like, <laughs> so I had a bigger long chomp that I could put like a shoulder bag, like tote for beach days, but that most of the time stayed folded up in our room and only got brought out for beach days. And I did not carry it around any of the cities or anything. It was just, it was too much of a like, hey, look at me bag. It was big, it's bulky, like going through crowds and stuff, like not my jam. All right. So let me talk about hats first, carry-ons, and then we'll go city by city and kind of like break down the outfits. So I did bring two hats. I brought a baseball hat and then a bucket hat from Black Bow. It's like the Lemoncello hat that matches my two swimmer I have from them. And I only really wore the bucket hat. I actually don't think I wore the baseball hat at all. It was just like uncomfortable feeling. It wasn't uncomfortable, but it just like seemed like it was gonna be uncomfortable every day. So I just wore the floppy bucket hat. The back, the bucket hat was easy cause it's like really floppy, foldable. It had like a string to go underneath my chin. So if it was windy, I just like, <laughs> you know? And um, I could have just left the baseball cap at home. It didn't take up a ton of room, but it was something that I brought that I didn't wear. So on that front, cut. Um, next trip, I might bring a like packable floppy straw hat. I might just bring my bucket hat. We'll kind of see how that goes. Um, there are definitely times in the cities and like when we were sightseeing that I could have done with like a hat. So I think I need something for that versus like another like beach hat where like my bucket hat kind of does that job. For my carry-ons, I bought brought a Longchamp Le Pillage original, Le Pillage, Pillage, Pillage. Um, original travel expandable bag. This is like the one with the zip. So what went in here was my tech stuff, my makeup, my skincare, because I had to take those at, at security, and then my shoes because they were lightweight. And then in the away, the bigger carry-on, which I think is now actually too big for Air Canada restrictions. I'm not sure about other airlines, but definitely Air Canada has become super strict about this. So keep that in mind if you are looking for this bag. Uh, it's probably not gonna make the cut anymore. This had clothes, the rest of my shoes, bikinis, undies, PJs, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's kind of how I separated it and it was kind of by need. Again, traveling with carry-on only is low-key kind of annoying. And I know that there are like backpackers who do that, but y'all are built different. It's not for me. It's not my life. Anyways. Okay, so on the flight, I wore leggings. Um, they were the Set Active Sculpt Flex. I wore my Aritzia Honor Tank in the like dry basil color and a white sweatshirt, which was also from Aritzia, and then my white sneakers. I honestly could have just skipped the leggings, if I'm being honest with you, and just worn my linen pants. Now, these are very small differences here and there, but it's like the extra stuff. Like, it's just the weight and all of that. Like, I could have left the leggings at home, not dragged them around the country. I only ever wore them on the plane. So I could have just worn my white linen pants, washed them, hung them out to dry, and worn them to the beach the next day. It would have been totally fine. 
Um, I also think that I could have definitely worn my white linen shirt over top of everything and then put my like sweatshirt on over top as well. Now, now honestly, this is just such a small thing again, but it really is all about like, what can you carry on your body so that you're not like, you know, it's not like on your back sort of thing. Like if it's spread out across your whole body, it's a lot lighter. And it's also just about like room and weight and blah, blah, blah. Anyways. So, Positano night one, I wore my Babbitton Anderson dress and my teaks. I love the color of this dress and honestly, it looks really good, except for at the back, at the bottom, the material is not the most flattering. So I feel like it kind of clings to my hip dips and any like dimples, anything like that. Don't love it. I've already talked about this dress before. I love how the dress looks aesthetically, but I do think that like in terms of form and function, it could have been better and the material is quite heavy and you know i i could have done something else and i you know it's whatever but i did love this dress and i love the photos and it looks really good it just this dress in particular is just not the quality that i kind of want it to be um and then i wore flip flops when i was hiking down a mountain i don't actually recommend this but i honestly could not make myself wear my sneakers because I had like worn them for a whole flight and my my feet kind of hurt because I was still breaking them in. And my Tevas looked terrible with the outfit. So we were left with the teeks because the heels were obviously a no-go, but that's what I wore on night one. Day two, I wore a bikini and linen pants. The bikini is a Tropic of Sea top, L space bottoms. And then the linen pants are the Copel pants from Babaton, which is at Aritzia. And then I had a cover up as well at the beach, which was Tropic of Sea as well. It matches the top. Then I also bought a headscarf from Luisa Positano, which I liked the night before. I love this scarf. I can't wait to whip it out again. I wore it so much on this trip. And honestly, I would recommend a little headscarf like this. It is just great. It's a great accessory. So multi-purpose. I wore it a bunch of different ways and it was easy to just kind of tie onto my bag and use it throughout the day to either tie my hair back or cover my head to keep the sun off of it, anything like that. Then I also had a second look, which was a blue bikini from Triangle. And I love everything that I wore that day. I just like regret not getting more photos. Um, that's gonna be the thing. I have so many photos, but I regret not getting more photos. Um, I also packed my bucket hat from Black Bow and it was just as protection, but it was great. It worked. And I definitely think I will be getting more bucket hats from Black Bow in the future because they were really cute and they make an easy outfit. So for day, oh, and then at night, I just wore the like triangle scarf with the white linen pants I wore down that day. And that was it. Um, for Positano day three, uh, this was our like Italy day three, Positano day three. This was the boat day. So I wore poplin shorts. They're the Deacon three in shorts from Aritzia. Um, my linen button up and the black bow bikini, the triangle limoncello one in the morning and then a triangle like orange one in the evening in the afternoon. I wish I got more photos as well, but like, so it goes. The shoes were Tevas and then I brought my bucket hat that matched. Everything was really cute. Um, my Tevas are still not super comfortable even now. So I need to break them in more before I bring them to Greece. And the shorts, <laughs> Okay, so these shorts, I honestly wore them once, maybe. I could have just left them at home, honestly. Like these shorts and the other linen shorts that I have, I could have left them. I thought that I was gonna wear them more, but I, I really didn't. My bad. Um, I think that the poplin is just not super comfortable in the weather. Here, poplin is like kind of comfortable, but like poplin shorts in that humidity, they're so, like there's something about them. They're so like unforgiving. And I think I should have just like gotten linen shorts or something else because these were just not comfortable and I ended up not wearing them because of that. So anyways, <laughs> so Positano night three, uh, we ended up picking up some antipasti from the grocery store and on, like on our walk up to the taxi stand from the pier. So we weren't really gonna do anything. We just had dinner back at the place, but I decided that after the rainstorm cleared that I was going to like take some photos. So I got dressed and I put on this crochet set from the Naked Emily Star collection. I love how this looks. The top is definitely not practical, but it made for banging photos. 
and that was kind of like the trade-off with that so positano to ravello slash like ravello day one we had to lug our suitcases up this like staircase because like our like it wasn't really an airbnb but like you know situation was so the road is here stairs then you go around and then like more stairs really beautiful but the way everything is built everything is built onto the cliff face and they only have roads at certain points so if you're in between you really do have to like walk and honestly the people who live on the amalfi coast must be so fit because of those stairs like there's just stairs everywhere but anyways so we had to you know drive our suitcases up in the humidity and then down because like the taxi stand and then there's the whole old town of positano and you have to drag yourself down this hill down some stairs to get to the pier which is the very bottom it's gorgeous but it's very challenging on the body Anyways, so I was sweating. So I wore my Sedactive sport body dress and my linen shirt with white sneakers. The reason I wore my linen shirt with white over top was one, so that I had something to carry up, but also the back of my Sedactive dress is all open and I love it, it's great, but I just didn't want to draw so much attention to myself when I had all of my suitcases and luggage. I really just wanted to be covered and kind of appear more modest because I didn't want to drag, like draw more attention to myself than I already was, if that makes sense. And I was sweating. It was like eight o'clock in the morning and with the humidity, we were dripping. When we arrived to Ravello, we showered, got changed. I switched out into my Tevas, my beige midi skirt, which is the Ibiza midi skirt from Maritzia. It's old, I don't know if they sell it anymore. And then a white crop tank, which is the TNA ribbed crop, ribbed racer back cropped in white and then um we just like kind of walked around in the evening it it was supposed to get dark and stormy but we had kind of like an hour or two where like we could see the clouds so we decided to just head back to the hotel and hang out by the pool in the meantime and at the pool i wore my 437 by vivian old set with the matching wrap it was super cute and then we kind of like went back inside when it was storming. Then we chilled. And then I, we were supposed to go to Villa Timbrone, but it was pouring and like everybody wanted to be boring. And I was like kind of grumpy with them and I told them everybody this. Um, so after the storm passed, we did actually venture out, but I honestly like was in kind of a bad mood. And I think everybody was in a bad mood at this point that we didn't really dress up um, so I just wore my Kalani Kini shorts and linen oversized shirt and I probably just wore my white sneakers or something But yeah, this was not a cute look and we did end up going to Villa Cimbrone and because of the storm it was like empty and Yeah, I still got cute pics, but it was not a cute outfit and honestly with these shorts I thought that I was gonna be and I, they have a matching bikini, but I thought I was going to be way more excited about them than I actually ended up being I did not wear these as much as i should have and i think that kind of combination was wasted space as well i thought i was going to be obsessed with them because when i was in toronto before i was leaving i was so in love with them i was obsessed i was like reaching for them all the time when i was here but as soon as i got there i was kind of like eh. and maybe it's because the shorts were like I don't know the shorts were comfy but the shorts were kind of long and the bikini wasn't as comfortable as other things so it was maybe like a combination of that but i don't know i definitely could have just left them at home i love them but they were just not reached for on the trip and so in my mind that equates to wasted space could have just left them but hindsight is 2020. okay Rivello day two this is definitely one of my favorite looks of the trip, even though it is the most basic. It was giving all linen, coastal grandma, like probably not chic, but also kind of chic. Um, I wore my Coppel linen pants, my linen shirt, and I had my linen scarf tied around my hair and I had teaks. And then underneath everything, I wore my Bidey Cecilia bikini, which I absolutely love. I wish I had discovered this brand before this collection sold out because I would have gotten so many more pieces from this print. I love it. And then 
I don't know if I had a second, no, I didn't have a second look during this day, but I just love it. I loved, I just love this look. I loved walking around town with my oversized linen shirt and my linen pants. I was serving coastal grandmother realness and everybody was like, what is this half Chinese kid doing walking around looking like this? Anyways, loved it. Love to see it. I will wear it again, 10 out of 10. Okay, Ravello night two. This is not a practical look, but it was a slay. So this was the look that I was supposed to wear the night before at Villa Cimbrone. Um, so we went back to Villa Cimbrone on the nice night when everybody was dressed and ready. This dress is from Revolve, super sexy, open back. I loved it. It was not practical to pack something like this because it's satin, didn't breathe well, it didn't travel well, whatever, but the photos were perfection, obsessed. I loved it. The only thing I would say about this dress that I don't like is the front. It's like a triangle with like a scoop. Now the triangle under, like the triangle bra underneath is actually very comfy. I just don't like where the cowl neck sits on it all. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do pick this dress up. Um, the shoes I wore were the same Edelman heels. They were super comfy, but I don't recommend obviously walking through a very old cobblestone city on a hill or well, on a mountain in them. It's just not practical. Like the steps aren't even, it's like all cobblestone-y. Like it's just not. Heels plus the Amalfi Coast are probably not you're gonna be your friend, except if you're in like the town of Positano proper. But like it was a sleigh, so we're okay with it. So then afterwards, I obviously, that was kind of uncomfortable because of the satin and stuff. So I switched into my black knit Reformation set while we were waiting for dinner. And I love the set. I can't wait to whip it out as soon as the weather is warm here. I will definitely pack it again. And I definitely recommend you guys get a set like this. Um, my best friend also has a similar like black midi. Okay, sorry for the change of angle. My phone died. But what I was saying is my best friend has a similar black midi cohort set situation. And we both love them. And they're easy to pack. They're easy to wear. They're easy to wash. Just they're great. Um, on day three in Ravilla, we day tripped out to Priano for lunch at Il Franchino and did a little sightseeing. I wore this linen cord set from Refora Reformation. This was lined, so the skirt was a little bit heavy and like with linen and stuff, you do have to worry about creases. The way we dealt with that was if you get like a little spray bottle and just fill it with water and then spray down the crease and let it dry as it's hanging, it does actually release it, which is quite nice. Then I also wore my Tevas and I brought my linen scarf for a little pop of color. And I also think that this outfit was a 10 out of 10. I could have reworn the pieces in other outfits if I had really thought about it. Um, but I honestly don't think I would have done anything different. And I was also really focused on having enough different looks that were like quite different so that it didn't look super repeated while also trying to keep my pieces minimal. But in doing that, you do end up ultimately having pieces that you don't rewear or that you don't get as much use out of as you want to if you're like me and are focused on having so many different like different enough looks but then i was also like trying to repeat pieces and i was like nobody's gonna care if i repeat a piece here or there so that being said at night i wore this midi linen slip dress from Maurizio, which they did bring back this year and my linen shirt i do like how these photos looked in like these photos look but in real life i honestly kind of felt like this dress was a little bit frumpy. It didn't fit quite as well. I definitely think I could have easily reworn the mini skirt and a different tank top, like just packed like a little beige tank top or something. And I would have been comfy while achieving a very similar look. And the tank top would honestly have been smaller and lighter than the dress. Um, then the next day we went from Ravello to Capri. Um, yeah, so I brought well, these shorts. I bought them on a whim and I went to go return them because I was like, you know what? I honestly don't really need them. And then they said that oh, we can't take them back and I was stuck with them. So anyways, I wore these shorts from Ravello with a white tank top and white sneakers and my white linen shirt because it was honestly kind of chilly and raining surprisingly. That's the other thing about September in, well, kind of anywhere is as soon as you cross the Rubicon, that is Labor Day long weekend, the weather gets a little dodgy. Now the weather is still perfection but some days we could have definitely had a little bit more, a little, a few, a couple more layers, you know? Um, 
but that was that yeah obviously the shorts i didn't need to buy and i could have just worn my kalani ones instead um but yeah anyways capri day one in the afternoon after the sun cleared up it was super nice we found this museum down at the bottom of the town and honestly we were like the only people in it at certain points and i guess people in capri just don't really go to museums but it was beautiful and i would recommend you check it out um but yeah it's the saint james quarter house i think um yeah beautiful uh so we got cleaned up after the rain and i put on this like high neck um aritzia linen dress which i do love it is a little bit sheer so keep in mind you'll need something up there and nude undies for sure um but like capri is one of those places where if you walk around looking like a drowned rat they're actually gonna treat you like a drowned rat like regardless they're gonna treat you like garbage i don't know what it was about us in capri just didn't mash it was like magnets um and honestly even when we were looking presentable we were treated like garbage at certain places and i can definitely go into this more if you guys want a trip breakdown and like what i've learned but i will say if you are a racialized minority do not go to the prada store in capri it was terrible like to the point where so i am white passing I identify as mixed or like whatever you want to consider it but i'm like my mom is Chinese Singaporean and my dad is British Canadian. I identify as mixed, I identify as a halfie, a halfu, a wapa, a, a, not a wapa, a whatever you want to call it. I identify as like the thing that's both. Um, but I am obviously very white presenting and typically, so like I was saying, I pass as white in most situations, which has given afforded me quite a bit of privilege, um, which I acknowledge obviously however it does always highlight in the situations where i can't pass how bad the racism is if that makes sense because if i experience x level of racism by the people who recognize what i am and i can only imagine what people who don't pass as white at a quick glance experience yeah anyway so if you're a racialized minority just please keep this in mind if you are not like european passing um it can get uncomfortable there anyways okay so i love this dress and let's go back to the fashion um capri is apparently the place to wear white linen so i was definitely on brand with all of my looks for there um Maybe this was something easily Googleable and I was just dumb about it, but yeah. I do wish I had reworn this dress in Realm or at some other point in the trip, just because I think it did look so good. And yeah, it was too good to wear once, but I do, it's like outfit repeating, but I do like getting good use out of my clothes. It's good. Anyways, Capri night one, we, so we went to this restaurant called Panorama, which was the best service we had our entire time in Capri. That was the other thing. I think service in Capri was really bad and I think it was potentially exacerbated by the fact that we are racialized minorities. Now, not to make everything about race, but when my white friend and I were by ourselves, it was slightly, like we got treated slightly better than when it was our, like when our Asian friend was with us. So take that for what you will, but like, yeah, Capri was not a great place, you know, for that. And yeah, we just, we weren't having a great time there. But this place was great. I would really recommend if you go. Great views, the staff was super friendly. They were awesome. I wore this white Amanda Upricher dress from Revolve. It looks so good. I did wear a sticky bra, but I probably could have gotten away with it. Sticky bras are just always a little uncomfy, but it is what it is. Okay, day two in capri we went to a beach club we went to da luigi because la fontanella was hella booked up but la fontanella is the the capri beach club it's the one that you see in all the photos and everything like that now da luigi was actually super lovely because it's around the corner so la fontanella looks out directly into the mediterranean da luigi is actually behind the Ferrago the faragolini like the cliff thingies that stick out. So it's actually kind of connected to one of those and it's around the corner in this little cove. 
And this actually makes it way more sheltered because Capri, one, it's super windy, but two, if you are on the into the Mediterranean side, not into the mainland side, it's really hella choppy. And now these are into the Mediterranean, so they're on the south side of the island. So beautiful, amazing views, gorgeous, but it's open water, there is chop. Keep that in mind. You're not like in like the little bays that the beach clubs on the mainland are typically in or like just like in like the towns are always kind of in these little co like little Kobe Bay situations which protect them so all those beach clubs are like kind of protected no no this is like open water <laughs> so keep that in mind um it was beautiful and the positioning I mentioned this it gets sunshine all day some of the beach clubs in the main on the main island of Capri actually don't get full sun because of where they are on the island so keep that in mind especially if you're going somewhere on the north side of the island it's going to be dark at certain points because it's like a big big like cliff right like a big mountain and so as soon as the sun kind of drops around behind it is going to impact that and this is kind of a thing with all beach clubs um except for the ones like actually like on the beach even like Las Cogliera had this issue but like the ones all in Priano and stuff be careful about where they are because of the sunshine if you're like into all day sun so anyways I wore a white tank, which I honestly think at this point is my most worn piece, the Limoncello bikini from Black Bow, the other one, and I actually packed three bikinis for this day, lol, and the crochet skirt from Naked. So the second bikini was an older 437 by a Mayer Fair group collab. I love this bikini. This was like, I wore the Limoncello bikini in the morning to take photos and because it was like really cute, it went with the outfit. And then I changed into the 437 bikini for tanning because it was skimpy but also cute to take cute photos. And then the third bikini was a triangle swim bikini. Now I love how triangle swim bikinis look, but I don't love how they wear, if that makes sense. And it's just, I find them very heavy and not as like comfortable, like not as well cut as the 437 ones or the Limoncello or the Black Bow ones are. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you have a similar body type to me, they do look good, but I don't personally find them as comfortable. So I'm probably just gonna leave them at home here in the future. This is a very long video. So Capri and I too, I ended up re-wearing my midi skirt again and wore this linen tube skirt from Reformation. 10 out of 10, would recommend this shirt. I love it. I'll link the similar one from this year. It's just so comfy, so easy, looks so good. Snatches the waist. It has like, yeah, it's just, it, it was just glorious. I did wear a similar one to Ravello, but the tube top made it just different enough. And yeah, I loved it. Can't say enough good things. Okay, then we went from Capri to Rome. Honestly, as soon as we got on the ferry and pulled away from the docks at Capri, we all collectively breathed a sigh of relief. We had a terrible time in Capri in comparison to everywhere else. Now it was still gorgeous, it was still beautiful, but yeah, maybe I will do a video of our experiences on the Amalfi Coast. Now I should have just worn what I wore on the plane, um, or I honestly should have just worn this on the plane. I wore the linen pants, my green tank top, and white sneakers. Should've just worn this. Would've saved myself the, le like, the leggings I didn't wear, except for on the planes. So it wasn't useful anyways. Um, maybe I'll learn, but also, I also always like don't wanna wear my linen pants on the plane because I just like don't wanna be in them for that long. And I don't really wanna like get them dirty or something that early in the trip. But yeah, I also don't wanna carry around leggings. It's like, I, I need to choose. Rome night one. Okay, so to go out in Rome, I had a really cute outfit, but I honestly could have skipped this and just reworn the orange dress from Positano night one, or I could have worn this tank top with the midi skirt for a very similar look, but I wore a bright orange sculpt knit cami, linen shorts. These are the effortless linen shorts and white sneakers. Considering nothing had been worn at any other point in this trip, this was kind of wasted space, but it was super nice to have all fresh clothes for Rome. So that was the trade-off that I was kind of like working through was I had all of these clothes that I was wearing, beach, salty, all of this sort of stuff. And I was like, you know what? Okay, then I packed all of that away and I actually didn't rewear pretty much anything at all um, from that part of the trip. And it was super nice to have like fresh 
crisp, clean clothes. But for space, was it really necessary? No, but I did have space. So it was the trade-off, but I could have, you know, had a little bit of a lighter load or moved another pair of shoes out of my like shoulder bag into there or something if I hadn't packed the stuff that I have mentioned wanting to get rid of. On Rome day two, I wore this super cute yellow dress from Maurizio. I love this dress and it was perfect for running around in the city. The material isn't super, super comfortable. So do keep that in mind, but it looked stunning. So flattering. Then I wore white sneakers in the morning and then it rained. So I switched into my Tevas because my sneakers just like with the rain and the humidity and like all the walking, my feet were kind of swollen. So I just wanted something like comfortable. So I wore my Tevas. And then it started raining, which did drop the temperature. It didn't, it wasn't actually cold. So something that like, I think I always have a hard time conceptualizing is like at the outset, you're like 24 degrees is warm. 30 degrees is also warm. But when you're in 30 degrees every single day in the sun, tanning, like all of this, and then it drops to 24 degrees and it's overcast and there's no sun at all, that feels cold, like cooler. So you need something for that. So I was glad that I had my sweater with me. So I did just get back because the temperatures did drop. At night, it was beautiful. Like the post rain, like post rain Rome is great. And like Rome in the rain is actually so romantic. I don't know what it is. I love like Rome in the rain, Paris in the rain. Like there's just, I don't know. Like when you're there and it's summer and it just like rains for like an hour or two and you get this like very like, gloomy overcast coat especially in like september it's like cozy kind of feeling like pre-fall vibes it's lovely um what i wanted every day absolutely not but like it was cute while it lasted um <laughs> so going on that night it was a little bit cooler from the rain but definitely the temperature had come back up so i just wore my knit black maxi skirt with my white tank dress and teaks i was very comfy very happy um my friend and i went to like one of our friends went for dinner with a family friend. So it was just like the two of us left. So we went to go to a seafood restaurant close to our hotel. Really easy, great, loved it. Day three, this was our last day on the trip. My chest honestly got so burnt guys. It was so funny. Um, the whole trip, I was so good about sunscreen. I remember to put on sunscreen. I remember to sunscreen my chest. I remember to sunscreen my shoulders cause that's where I get burnt the most. And then in Rome, walking around, I don't sunscreen. Dumb B move, let me tell you. So anyways, I wore the uh, Genoa dr linen dress from Maurizia. This is a little bit heavier. And I honestly wish that the dress wasn't as heavy as it is. It's just heavy because this part is double lined and then there's smocking. Like I think the smocking could have been smaller and then the double lining was good, but I think they should have double lined with like a cotton instead of like just double lined the linen. That was a bit lazy on their part. Um, but the dress itself was really gorgeous and it had a high slit and it was flowy. So it was beautiful. I did love it. I probably will pack it again. I just like know that it is a little bit heavy feeling in the chest area. It's just kind of like keeping that in mind, but it was gorgeous and I loved it. Can't say enough good things. Then finally this last night, um, we went to a food tasting in the Travestera the 13th district in rome especially like the last district right before the vatican and this was a food tour it was great and i wore my black cohort set from ref that i had already worn for a night in ravello i loved it my friends and i we all inadvertently matched we wore black um like all black skirts tanks and then everybody had on white sneakers it was really funny but we matched and that was everything that I wore. So yeah, um, there's obviously a lot here. I will try to put chapters for everything. And yeah, I was like, no, cause I had notes. Cause obviously this is a lot of information. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Everything will be linked down below that I can. Things are sold out cause they are from last year, but I will link what I can. And I will also link like, what do you, like similar items if I can find something, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.